On the outskirts of Cape Town lies Kreifontein. Like so many of South Africa's townships, it was built to house black workers who came to the cities looking for employment. With its sprawling shacks, poorly constructed houses and informal shops, Kreifontein looks like any other township. And as is the case in so many other townships in South Africa, life here is tough. It was on Cryfontaine's dusty streets that we discovered a traditional South African sport that's undergoing something of a renaissance. Known as Ndonga or Glala Nduku, which means to play with sticks, Nguni stick fighting is an ancient African martial art. Vishile Diolatana is one of the driving forces behind the sport. It's one of the very first sports in Africa to be started by Africans. It was, and still is, very much about entertainment. It's a highly enjoyable sport for everyone. Nguni stick fighting is very much an African pastime. Stick fighting competitions, which rely solely on word of mouth, were started last year by Vusile and his business partner, Charles Maisel. Before a tournament is staged, Fusile and his team of helpers scout out locations that are relatively central to the township. They select somewhere that will likely draw a crowd and which is easily accessible. Once a site has been chosen, the group set up a square and a number of demonstration fights are then staged to drum up interest. People get very interested when they hear that there is stick fighting happening. It really surprises them because it's not something they expect to see in the townships. It usually only happens out of town. It's a very traditional thing, and I think that's part of its appeal and why so many people turn up at the events. Held all day, the competition is open to anyone, with willing entrants paying five rand to enter. Each of the fighters is then paid 30 rand, the equivalent of four US dollars for successfully finishing a fight. The overall winner takes home the top prize of 1,000 rand, which is around $150. With unemployment in the townships running at 20%, the competition offers many a chance to earn some much needed cash. Yet for the combatants, the reasons for participating have less to do with potential rewards and more to do with the thrill of the fight. It's great fun. I love stick fighting. It's exciting. Stick fighting was a childhood pursuit of Nelson Mandela and is traditionally practiced by teenage boys in rural villages across South Africa. Each combatant is armed with two long sticks, one for defense and one for attack. A blanket is used for protection. The sticks, which can vary in length, are between three and five centimeters thick and come from acacia trees. Bouts are three minutes in length and a fighter can win by either scoring more points than his opponent or by making his opponent quit. This is shown by throwing your stick to the ground. Points are awarded by two judges who follow the action closely and scoring is done according to which part of the body is struck. The head, arms and legs are worth six points, the throat five, while the abdomen is worth four. A shot to the hip area, one of the easier targets to hit, is good for three points. Other rules include the fight being stopped if one of the competitors loses his stick or it breaks and if the action gets too close to the crowd. We created these rules to help modernize the sport. We try to make it as easy as possible to understand. The one thing that a fighter must not do is swing his stick in an upwards motion. This is to prevent hits to a person's private parts. We don't want anyone to have a serious injury.
as with any combat sport that encourages hits to the head, the dangers are very real. With health and safety in mind, fighters are required to wear scrum caps. There's also a person with medical knowledge on site to administer basic first aid, should anyone require it. It's not too bad. I used to play this game when I was young, so I'm used to being hit on the head. I don't hold a grudge because it's all part of the sport. I know people may disagree, but I'd encourage other people to join in. For some, this sport could appear to lack any kind of finesse, not to mention any kind of organisation. However, with a skill set passed down from father to son, Ngudi stick fighting is about discipline, focus and technique. It's important in this sport to be both skillful and quick thinking. You must be able to defend yourself at all times. When you're attacking, your opponent is also attacking. Therefore, it's important to remember to use your blocking stick. Stick fighting's unique word-of-mouth approach means that, as the day progresses, not only does the atmosphere become more intense, the crowd builds in size too. It's not uncommon for these competitions to attract in excess of a thousand people. At these events, you'll always see people shouting and jumping for joy during the fights. Nguni stick fighting is a very important part of Koza tradition. It has a strong connection to people's roots and culture. That's why the sport is so popular. With its visceral and exciting style, Nguni stick fighting has the potential for massive growth. And judging by the public interest on display in Cryfontein when Transworld Sport was in town, its popularity looks set to explode. For the sport to grow, we need people to invest in it. We need more money to promote stick fighting, to help develop it here and internationally. Our plan at the moment is to spread our wings across the whole country, to the eastern and northern Cape, KwaZulu-Natal, and then to all the northern provinces. It's thanks to the hard work of people like Vusile Diolotana that the future of Nguni stick fighting is bright. Not only is the sport bringing back a sense of community to the inhabitants of South Africa's townships, but with each success they have, it's also becoming a source of pride, status and income among the fighters. It feels wonderful. I won the stick fight and the 1,000 rand. I'm so happy.